Howdy. This video is on rate equations, which are also called rate laws. With a rate equation, the effect of the concentrations of the reactants on the reaction rate can be determined. The rate equation can be used to help determine the mechanism for reaction, how reaction actually occurs, which is necessary to know if you want to speed up the reaction or slow down the reaction. What you should be able to do after watching this video is given the reaction equation, sorry, the rate equation, determine how the rate changes when the concentrations of the reactants are changed. Given the initial rates of a reaction with the different initial concentrations, you should be able to determine the rate equation and the rate constant. Please remember four factors affect the reaction rate, three factors affect the rate constant. And so we have this made up reaction. A plus B goes to C plus D, and so lowercase letters are the coefficients, and then the uppercase letters, the capitals, are the, are the compounds. And so immediately when we're given a reaction, we can write down a rate equation, rate equals K concentrations of the reactants, to some power. Now these exponents have to be determined experimentally. Now, if you have a catalyst, you also have to include that in your rate equation. And again, it will also have a exponent. And so this is referred to as the rate equation or the rate law. And so the rate is equal to the rate constant, lowercase k. Please do, do not get confused between the rate constant, which is lowercase k, and the exponent constant, which is capital K, times the concentration of the reactants to some power. Now, those exponents of the reactants can be 0, 1, 2, or a fraction, positive, or negative. Probably one of the most important things to remember is that the exponents have to be determined experimentally. Now looking at this rate equation, we would say that the reaction was m order with respect to a. So if m was two, we'd say it's second order with respect to a. We'd say it's n order with respect to b. And so say n was one, then we'd say it's first order with respect to b. P order with respect to catalyst, say that was three, and so it'd be third order with respect to the catalyst. The overall order is a sum of those exponents. And so say M was two and one P three, that would give you sixth order, not very um, likely, but you just add up the exponents to get the overall order for the reaction. And again, when we did equilibrium, you know, you could actually, the coefficients became the exponents. But again, in rate equations, you have to be, have to determine um, those exponents um, experimentally. And so always make sure that you're comparing and you're contrasting um, kinetics and equilibrium so you don't get confused between the two. You know, equilibrium constant, we had upper, uppercase K for the equilibrium constant. Um, rate constant's a lowercase K. The two are not really related um, much at all, not directly. For equilibrium, exponents are the coefficients. So you look at the reaction, and those, ex those coefficients just become the exponents. So it's from the reaction, you can actually just determine the equilibrium expression. For rate constants, the exponents have to be determined experimentally. For equilibrium expressions, pure solids or pure liquids were not included. For kinetics, you do include pure solids, pure liquids. For equilibrium, what happens with increasing temperature actually depended on is the reaction exothermic or endothermic. So for endothermic reactions, heat is a reactant, so increasing temperatures like adding heat pushes the reaction towards producing more products. For exothermic reactions, heat is a product, adding higher temperatures like adding more product, and so that pushes more to reactants. And so for endothermic reactions, increasing temperature increases K. For exothermic reactions, increasing temperature decreases to K. Now for kinetics, higher temperature pretty much always means faster reaction. So again, always compare and contrast equilibrium with kinetics. Um, make sure you don't get confused between the two. And so this is our rate law. Now we've seen before that the rate of reaction depends on concentrations, physical state reactants, temperature, presence of a catalyst. And so if you look at the rate law, the concentrations are there explicitly. And so for the rate constant, that's going to include these three things, physical state, temperature, and presence of the catalyst. Um, the rate constant is not affected by the concentration, just by these three things. The rate is affected by all four things. And so here we are, is our rate constant, K equals 
rate equals k times concentration of a to power of n, concentration b to power of n. Now if m is equal to 1, we'd say that the reaction was first order with respect to a. And so if we double the concentration of a, notice that's going to be 2 to the first power. And if we double the concentration with respect to a, the rate doubles. And so for first, when it's first order, you double the concentration, the rate doubles. Now if we triple the concentration of A, again notice that the 3 will be to the power of 1, then the rate will be 3 times as fast. Now if M equals 2, then we'd say it's second order with respect to A. Now if we double the concentration, you notice that 2 gets squared. And so now you have four times. And so if it's second order with respect to A, and you double the concentration, then the rate will be four times as fast. If you triple the concentration, the three gets squared, and so then the rate will be nine times as fast. Now if M equals three, we'd say it's third order with respect to A. Now if we double the concentration, that 2 gets cubed, 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. And so the rate, the new rate, will be 8 times as fast as the old rate. If we triple the concentration and it's third order, that 3 gets cubed, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, and so the rate will be 27 times as fast. So if the concentration is doubled and it's zero order with respect to A, the rate will not change. If it's first order with respect to A, the rate doubles. If it's second order with respect to A, um, the rate will increase by, will be four times as fast. If it's third order with respect to A, then the rate will be eight times as fast. And so, told if you know the rate equation and you're told how the concentration changes, you should be able to determine how fast the rate will, what the new rate will be. Now also, if the concentration is doubled and you know how the rate changes, you need to be able to know what is the exponent. And so I've made a point that the exponents have to be determined experimentally. You can determine experimentally by looking at concentration changes, how does the rate change, and then you can determine what must be that exponent. So for instance, if it's doubled, if the concentration of A is doubled and the rate does not change, that tells you it's zero order with respect to A. If the concentration is doubled and the rate is two times as fast, that means it must be first order with respect to A. And so you need to be able to go from the concentration, how the concentration changed, how the rate changed, to the rate equation. You also need to be able to go from how the concentration changed to, and the rate equation to how the rate changes. So go from here to here to there, and from there to there to there. If the concentration of A doubled and the rate is four times as fast, that means it must be second order with respect to A, because two squared is four. If the concentration is doubled and the rate is now eight times as fast, then that means it must be third order with respect to A. And so again, you should be able to go from how the concentration changed, how the rate changed, to the um, exponent. Again, this is what we mean by the exponents have to be determined experimentally. You should be able to go from how the concentration changed, rate law, to how the rate will change. We can also do this if A is tripled. So if A is tripled and is zero order, no change. A is tripled, first order, three times as fast. A is tripled, the, its second order would be nine times as fast. A is tripled, third order, 27 times as fast. Or if A is tripled and it's three times as fast, it means it's first order. If A is tripled and it's nine times as fast, then that means it must be second order. And so if we, you can see a question like this, what is the rate law for the following reaction? And so here we have the reaction. Now immediately we can write down rate equals K times the concentration of the reactants. Now the idea is we have to figure out what is that N? Now on this table is our experimental data. And so this column is the experiment number. So we did four experiments, one, two, three, four. And so the first experiment we had initial concentration of 0.1, 
and we measured a initial rate of 0 0.02. Second experiment, we had concentration of 0 0.2, measured rate of 0 0.08. Third experiment, 0 0.3, measured rate of 0 0.18. Fourth experiment, initial concentration is 0 0.4, initial rate was 0.32. Now we have to figure out, based on this data, what is that exponent? And so if we compare rates, Going from experiment one to experiment two, we doubled the concentration and the rate increased by a factor of four. And so that tells us it must be second order. If we look at experiment two and experiment four, double the concentration, the rate is now four times as fast. And so again, that tells us that must be second order. And so when you're asked about rate equation or rate law, the first thing you do is you write down rate equals K concentrations, some power, then you use your data to figure out what is that exponent. We can look at another example. And so again, we can immediately write down the rate equation. We have to figure out what that exponent is. Now, if we look at the data, um, so this is the first experiment, second, etc. And so going from here to here, the concentrations doubled, the rate doubles, Concentration doubles, the rate doubles, and so that tells us it must be first order with respect to N to O. And so in this case, N has to be 1. Now you could also be asked, okay, what is the value of the rate constant? Well, we're given the rate equation. Now all we have to do is solve for K, which is our rate constant. Now we can use any of the experimental data to actually calculate K. Now the way of doing this properly would be to calculate K for the, each of these experiments and then take the average. And for K we get 0.1 per second. But again, the best way of doing it, um, if you're doing it for real, would be to determine them all and then just take the average and you can even determine a standard deviation. Now we can look at a little bit harder example. And so what's the rate law for this equation? Now notice that we got two reactants. And so again, we can write down rate equals K concentrations of our two reactants. Now we have to determine these exponents. Now this is a little bit trickier. You know, when we're figuring this one out, we're gonna wanna hold this one constant. And so if you look at the first two experiments, um, this concentration doubles, this doesn't change, and the rate doubles. And so that tells us that N must be one. Concentration doubled, rate doubled, and so it's linear, and so N must be one. Now, to figure out M, we wanna look at when this concentration does not change. And so if we look at experiments two and three, here our concentration is four times as much and our rate is only twice as much. Concentration here is nine times as much and our rate is only three times as much. And so that tells us that for M that has to be a half. And so this is our rate equation. And so we determined the exponents one and one half exp um, exper from experimental data. And again, these exponents do not have to be integers. They can be positive, it can be negative, and they can be fractions. And so I'd say that this reaction is first order in terms of that reaction, relative to that reaction, half order relative to the chlorine, and the overall order would be 1.5. Now another question would be, what is the rate constant? And again, we just solve for K. And so K is equal to rate divided by the concentrations. Don't forget to include the exponents that you determined. Now, again, to do it properly, we should do all the experiments and then take the average. But notice that this data is really pretty good, unrealistic, and we get a rate constant of 0 0.01 um, concentration to the minus one half per second. 
And so the rate equation, rate law, it's very, really important, helps us understand the reaction, help us determine the actual mechanism for the reaction. Again, remember the rate constant, lowercase k, different than the Eckham constant, which is a capital K. Um, have to determine those exponents experimentally. And remember that the rate is affected by concentrations, physical state, temperature, presence of catalyst. But the rate constant is only affected by these bottom three. You know, concentrations are there um, explicitly. I hope that was helpful.